always on call. Except for planes, trains, and ships, I can fix anything, says Binodai cheekily. He believes that repairing things is not really as difficult as some people make it out to be. As long as you have electricity, a drilling machine, and a good head on your shoulders, you can teach yourself to be a good handyman, he says. Today, Binodai is the go-to handyman for all the residents in the more than 50 houses in Tawny Housing where he himself has been living for 11 years. They come to him for any electricity-related work that needs to be done. From wiring the whole house to fixing something as simple as a heater, Binodai does it all. No one in the colony dares to get an outside repairman because here the onus on maintaining handyman-client relation falls on the client. They have never known when they might need them. Binodai has a more nuanced take on the relationship. When you have a doctor in your own home, why would you go looking for medical assistance elsewhere, he says. The practitioner has not received any formal training. He picked up the tools of the trade by getting his hands greasy. He did go to school to learn the usual things, but by the time he was an inquisitive seven-year-old, he had already formed a strong opinion about education. That it was useless, at least for him. So he started spending less time attending classes and more and more time wandering around his village in Sopperi looking for something, anything to fix. He started by repairing lead-acid batteries for the villagers. Initially, he used to just sit and watch other mechanics at work while he observed everything they did like a sponge. But he could only watch for so long. The first chance he got, he dove in and thought his way through the problem. I realized if I believed enough, I could repair anything, except a watch. I don't have the patience to repair something that integrate with so many small parts. As a kid, he tried repairing a CAQ5. But the screws kept slipping through his fingers and he got so frustrated, he reached for the hammer in his toolbox and smashed it to pieces. Today, 35, he knows to stay away from watches. But anything else, the villagers brought to him broken radios, televisions, telephones, heaters, pumps. The Puche Mystery, as he was called, had no problem fixing. Some people would even carry him on their dokus to the villages in Halesi so he could fix their rice mealing machines. There was a simple engineering principle that he depended on. I would pull the thing apart, tweak a few things here and there, put it back together. That would either work or not. If it didn't, then I would pull the machine apart again, he says. You can't fix anything without first breaking it yourself a few times. Over the two decades that he has been working, he has built a vast repository in his head for the methods that worked and those that didn't. He has also developed a method to crack the most complex of schematics. Be it a TV, AC, telephone, cell phone, anything. There are only four major parts or variants thereof in all electric equipment. The diode, transistor, capacitor and integrated circuit, he says. I use a multimeter to figure out which one of these components is faulty. And once I've done that, I just focus on the problem area. For Binodai, it has always been as easy as that. And today, with his wife and co-worker by his side, things have gotten even easier. If she is not busy repairing a water pump or a TV, she can be found beside Binodai's ladder while he fiddles around with a light bulb or checks the ducts in an AC. She will be working on a peripheral part while he tackles the mother unit. She's so good that I don't have to hire an outsider. We are a family team, he says. It's a team that might soon get bigger. Every day, when his three kids return from school, they sit around him as he repairs stuff. Instead of doing their homework, they'll fiddle with things the way I used to as a kid.